Okay. My name is Julia Berg and I teach television production at Media City in the School of Media, Music and Performance. Um, my challenge is to teach students about how to address the broadcasting code and work within the broadcasting code. And one of the concepts they find sometimes difficult to grasp is due impartiality. What does due impartiality mean? It means lack of bias, it means being impartial and objective about your story. But it doesn't mean to say you can't present a view and you can't hold a view and actually um, have a personal view about something which is portrayed as long as you do actually provide balance within it. So it's all about portrayal. So I started with an empty chair on the basis that it depends who's sitting in the chair as to how you're going to portray it. And, um, and then, you know, there are choices of things you might show. I mean, this was a shoe shop. There are lots of choices of things you might show as to how you might choose one thing or another or favour one thing or another. But it's not a game. And if you treat it as a game, you could end up in serious trouble. Um, and uh, then you have problems of compliance in terms of dealing with big companies like Coca-Cola or other things and how you're going to portray them because they will have a very they will really go after you if you get that wrong and it could be quite scary. Um, so in that case you might need an emergency shelter to go into. But we actually don't want to end up in that circumstance. We want to be able to provide correction fluid in order to correct the mistakes that we make as we go along so that we don't get it wrong and we don't end up having to hold a gun to our head um, and, uh, uh, and then you know, hide behind some kind of mask, which might actually be a mistake. Um, so uh, I'm not sure about that one. So a lot of it is about how we perceive the world around us and that depends on who is in the chair. And we're all learners at this game and I think it's very important that we remember that because we have to change as we go along. Um, somebody might be in the chair um, who we don't know and we have to portray a bit more carefully and we might need sticking plaster to retain it. I think I'm going over or even correction food. And it's not always what we see is what we know. It could end up being an advertisement. So, and it will cost us a lot of money. So that's the gist of it and my intervention, and you don't want to get that far and have them come after you, which could happen if the worst happens or you end up in a pile of dog poop. Um, so, uh, or the devil could come after you too. So, um, uh, it's about balance and it's about um, getting the, the balance right in terms of what we do and we mustn't be sheep when we do that. So, that's the important thing and you need rescue remedy at the end. And so my intervention, to make it clear to them, was some um, bite and sting cream, which should remind people to read the code before they get bitten and have to apply it. You can look on the web, I believe. I didn't hear the page. I had no idea what the page was. <laughs> okay, so you all know my name. I'm teaching programming at the Manchester College. And I really struggled the last week because, well, I didn't have problems. I do explain technical subjects, but I started teaching when I was a student myself. So having lecture in the morning and then going to going to teach in the evening, I saw problems or mistakes my lecturers were making, so I tried to avoid them in the evening. And well, now I can easily put myself into my learner's shoes and see how far they are, so I don't really struggle. The biggest challenge I have is, well, uh, sometimes all those whiteboards, yeah, they are now replaced with all those electronic things, and I hate IT, I can't use them. I want my proper whiteboard, well, with markers, and sometimes it's even not in the classroom or move to some awkward place which is not convenient for me to use. So that's the first thing I thought to get some markers for a board because well college does not provide them sometimes. The next thing I thought was glue and then super glue to keep learners in their seats and to listen properly. Well, idea of punishment stick went away. Uh, unfortunately, well, I really miss that time when we were allowed to use those in classrooms. Um, so having, not having these problems, I came up with different approach. We're technical people, um, so we're all doing that well, but we struggle with creativity. It's not part of our job, but well, that's one of things I wanted uh, to discuss. And I came up with this idea, like being a, a little bit more creative and thinking outside of the box. Well, it took me last minute to run away and to get that, but for example, who said that all balls should be round? Well, you don't have to. It's a stress ball, which isn't really round. 
So that's another way to represent the problem and look at it from a different angle. Because you see, when you look at it from different angle, this picture changes. It's not like egg, which you turn and always see the same. This one will be different from all perspectives. So think about it when you write your program next time. Thanks.